Welcome everyone and uh, good afternoon. Um, welcome to this webinar organized by Twinning Europe. My name is Marta and I'm very happy to support this webinar today. Just a practical information for you, the webinar uh, will be recorded and the recording might be used for dissemination material. And please, if you have questions, post them in the chat and we will address them at the end during the Q&A session. So, um, our focus for today is on artificial intelligence. And the question we will address is how to bring artificial intelligence into an e-twinning project. I'm very happy to introduce our speaker today. Marco Neves is a computer science teacher and CEO of Interact Ideas. He is a consultant in education, digital technology, and in artificial intelligence and education. He's also coordinator of educational projects, digital and green, and specialist in digital technology and, and education. But without further ado, Marco, if you're ready, I'm happy to give you the floor. I will upload your presentation. Perfect. I think it's, it's, it's working. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you very much. It's a huge pleasure to be here today with so many teachers and so many uh, at winners. Um, myself, I am an, an at winner uh, since 2008, so around 13 years. And today I'm here to um, talk with you and discuss a little bit about AI, artificial intelligence, and to try to figure out with some ideas, how can we integrate in artificial intelligence in um, a twinning project. I've been um, research and developed some projects around artificial intelligence in education in the, in the last years. And in the first part of my presentation, I will uh, focus um, in terms, not technical questions related with AI, okay, but mainly in terms, just to give you some context in terms of what is artificial intelligence. So any, any subject that we want to address, and this is a very important and critical topic nowadays, uh, artificial intelligence is not a, a, a technical issue, it's more than that, it's a human issue, it's related with ethics, it's related with lots of very um, um, critical things for us as humanity. So it's very important, at least for us, to have a notion around this. Okay, so mainly um, our event here today will be divided in these uh, two parts. Okay. Uh, first, just to create here some interaction, if you have a, a Twitter account, I just um, share with you this hashtag is AI at winning. And if you want to share some considerations, some comments, some thoughts related with what we will be talking here today, just please and, and do it and, and, and use it um, on Twitter using this hashtag. Before we start, I would like just to ask you to write on this answer garden in just one word, okay? Just what pop-ups in your mind, in just one second, okay? Just do not think uh, too much uh, too much um, uh, about it. What came out very quickly in, word, in one word, what AI means to you, okay? I will just give you here and I will, I will wait just a, a little bit and in the end, I can share what was the, the result here, I will just, because I have it also, you can go, if you want to go through the, the QR code, you can do it to the QR code. If you want to use the um, this link that I put it here, um, I think I can put it on a chat also. I don't know if it is possible for me. Okay, here for, for everyone, just let me, um, Pick up here and it will be easier for you. Okay, just give me one second and I will put for everybody just in one second. Okay, and you have it. Okay, Marta, thank you very much. You work quicker than me. So, one word very quickly, don't think too much about it. Poof. What is your, in one word, what is AI for you? Um, what you consider that is AI. Okay, and then in, in the end, 
I will share with you. Okay, perfect. So first, where uh, did all this start? Okay, we can go very back in, in terms of history and have some ideas related with AI. Uh, in ancient times, think about robots that can do the human jobs and so on. But there is a very important moment in history that was brought to us by Alan Turing when he wrote an amazing, and uh, uh, I just suggest to you, if you are interested on this topic, and this is uh, open access, that you read this amazing piece of writing is called Computing. Uh, it was um, Computing Machinery and, and, and Intelligence, and it was written in 1950, okay? More than 17 years ago. So this gives you the first clue. What is happening is that AI is not a new thing, okay? And in my opinion, start in this precisely moment when Alan Turing uh, posed this question. And the question was, can machines think? Okay, and from there until today, there was lots of things happen in the world of artificial intelligence. We have great moments of great development. Then we have some winter times with uh, things were not in, in the way that was expected. And nowadays in the last, let's say, 10 years, lots of things are starting to happen in the field of artificial intelligence. And this has to do with the fact that we have a lot of data today. We have very efficient algorithms. We have the power of computing and so on. But OK, it's not where we want to go in terms of our uh, talk today. Another very important thing is try to put this in the point of view in terms of intelligence, because we are talking about artificial intelligence, okay? We have human intelligence, so it's very important for us to have this clear um, perspective in terms of the way that we address intelligence in the way that we can then compare between these, let's say, two types of, of, of intelligence. And this is just um, one, one definition. There is a lot of definition in terms of intelligence. You all are educators and teachers, and we, we know that this question uh, associated um, with this. I just leave you one a definition, and I share with you this uh, very interesting uh, piece of paper. It's a collection of definitions of intelligence where you can access, just leave you with one consideration. In terms of intelligence, we humans have some kinds of limitations, for example, in the, the, the amount of information that we can storage, okay? We have this kind of limitations. We have other things in terms of artificial intelligence that does not have this kind, let's say, of limitation. So we have to find here in terms of the balance, okay? What is best from our side in terms of intelligence and what could be in terms of artificial intelligence? Some people uh, doesn't like to call it um, artificial, okay? That is another, another very interesting topic. But just to finish this point here, related with, with, with intelligence, I just leave you this, this code from Ian LeCun. Ian LeCun is the responsible for the AI, let's say, uh, group on, on, on Facebook. He was awarded with uh, the Turing um, uh, Award uh, last, last year with uh, other two uh, experts in the eye of artificial intelligence. And he, say, and he says, our intelligence is what makes us human. We should not forget that. Okay, and AI, artificial intelligence, is just an extension of that quality. What we want to say from here is that we need to use artificial intelligence in the way to extend our intelligence because the challenge, the problems that we are facing today, they are so complex that somehow, let's say, okay, we need some help. And that is the main question here. So. First point is not a question of replace human intelligence or replace the human, okay? 
with other intelligence, but pick up the best from both of them, okay? And make human intelligence with AI an extension of that amazing quality that we have today. Because we should not forget that artificial intelligence, it was created by human intelligence. Right? We don't have until the moment, and we never know if we will have it, some kind of artificial intelligence that can be, let's say, out of sufficiency and create their own um, things without the human support. Okay, so just let me make some, some contest here and I will, will put everything um, right. Contest, we are living a tremendous digital transformation, okay? is based on, on what is called industry 4.0, where we have smart machines. We have the biological side with the physical side that we call the cyber physics. We have the internet of things that connect all these kind of points. We have big data because we are producing lots and lots of lots of, of, of data. We have a quantum computing and so on. And one very important key here is artificial intelligence, okay? So in when you put all this together, we have this huge digital transformation. And of course, if you have this transformation, tremendous transformations, if you have these disruptions, we humans, we are facing new challenge. And it's very important because education is what we can use to change the world, right? And if you are, uh, facing this challenge, that means, in my opinion, that we also need to reflect in what is the true uh, purpose of education nowadays. And this challenge, for the first time in, in, in the history of humankind, we are losing our last field of exclusivity, and that is our intelligence, because we are starting to have machines that have the capability to do things that some years ago we were expecting only humans with human intelligence intelligence would, will be able to do. Okay, so just to give you the context in terms of we will we uh, here talking about doing this next um, uh, forty minutes. Another thing that I would like to highlight to you is nowadays that we are talking about artificial intelligence, we are mainly focused in one of the types of artificial intelligence. And that is that one in the middle, that is related with machine learning, neural networks, and so on, okay? That ones that make possible for artificial intelligence systems of agents to recognize image, to produce, let's say in terms of, of speech to understand what we are saying, but this, this is not the only field in terms of artificial intelligence. And as you can see from this picture, we have other areas, okay, like the symbolic one, that was, let's say, the one that were in the beginning of, after 1950 and so on, was the, the main area of research in terms of artificial intelligence, mainly to expert systems and so on. We have also the sum symbolic, and, but nowadays we are mainly focused on this uh, AI um, area in terms of what is being developed. Of course, there is lots of, of discussion that maybe this will not be enough to achieve some high levels of artificial intelligence, but this is another, another question. But nevertheless, it's important, okay? When we talk about artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is not only focused on this. There is other areas, and this is important for us to know once we are talking about our students with that. Okay, give you the contest, a very quickly one, okay? Because this is an, an area, there is lots of things to discuss and, 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 and so on, but just at, at least to put you on the contest. The next question, and you can just think a little bit about it, where is AI today? Okay, as I put on the title of the presentation, if you have a smartphone, okay, and if your smartphone is in your pocket, you have AI with you. Nowadays, our smartphones are completely full with artificial intelligence. If you are using Siri, if you are using OK Google, 
for example, to enhance the performance of the battery of your smartphone, some kind of AI is been is is been using. Okay, so the answer to this, and I will give you some examples right now, is that AI today is everywhere. Okay, and in different areas of our components of life, social, economical, culture, and so on, you can find the presence of AI. I will just, in the next slides, just give you some examples. Maybe some of you already know, okay, because you are aware about um, AI and the impacts and the challenge of AI. But I will just give you some examples where AI is today for you a, a more clear view. Autonomous vehicles, okay? They are full uh, with AI, right? Other, other examples, face recognition, okay? This is a, a, a very critical uh, topic in terms of AI, is AI, using AI. In games, for example, this is an example because I put it here because it was um, create a lot of, of discussion around this is when an uh, AI system called Google DeepMind uh, beat the, um, the world leader or the, the world player in the very um, complex game called Go, okay? And this was, uh, lots of things was written about this. They were using um, AI. Other examples. When you are using, as I was saying before, these digital assistants, Alexa, Siri, OK Google, and so on. This is uh, everything uh, about AI. Weather prediction and other lots of things related with prediction. This is AI. When you talk about the financial area, the fishing, and so on, they are using AI on this field also. If you are talking about uh, in health and healthcare and tools, to help us identify uh, disease and so on. There is AI on that also. If you are talking about these streaming providers like Netflix, HBO, and others like Amazon and, and, and so on, they are using AI according to your preference to predict what will be the next movie or the next series that you like to see. So there is AI on that. Other examples. If you are using your smartphone, as I was telling you, if you are using Google Maps, for example, this is using AI. Other examples, in education, there is a lot of um, um, tools and platforms in, in, in different aspects that are using AI. Some of them are not being developed the way that we're expecting in terms of changing education, mainly to maintain the old traditional pedagogical models. So, but this is another thing, but is using a lot in, in AI. And we, as educators and teachers, we need to be aware of that and what we can take the most from that, okay, to help to prepare our students for all these challenges and opportunities. Also, if you look, for example, in fake news, AI is being using around, uh, around this, not only to produce fake news, but also to detect fake news, okay? Then uh, this is another another example. Okay, this is not working because I have some animation here, but no problem. Producing text generation. Okay, so if you want to something to be written about some topic, you can use this um, model text that are producing with, with AI. For example, this one is GPT three, just for you to have a notion about what this kind of things can do. They were training in. 175 billion parameters, okay? And what was really amazing is the GPT-1 and GPT-2 that were able to write, let's say, text. What was discovered with this one is that can write poetry. This can write guitar tops. This can write even computer code, okay? So imagine all the potential that we have around this kind of um, of things. Another one, maybe one area that will be considered that will be very difficult for us to have uh, someone producing that was not a human, for example, in the, the, the field of heart. These two 
paintings that you are seeing here, these two images, they were produced by artificial intelligence. The one on your right, this one here, it was sold for more than 400,000 uh, uh, euros in an auction, okay? And the question here is, this painting belongs to who? To the AI that created, to the, the person that created the algorithm, to the person that used the algorithm, right? So as you can see here, lots of questions, lots of things around this that make us and um, think and reflect about all these new contexts and all these new um, realities. Just to give you other examples, how can we be creative with AI, okay? This is an, an example. If you have time to take uh, the link, um, th this one is mixing the GPT-3 and image and you just use the mix of words that are around here and it will create something completely new. Maybe something that even our mind, the most creative mind was not even think about, okay? And this is uh, um, possible due to AI. In sports, for example, to uh, analyze the different tactics and so on, the, the, the move of, 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 of the players on the field. They are using AI on, on that. Another example, on fashion, for example, okay? If you want to try a lipstick, if you want to try a dress, but you don't want to put the lipstick or you don't want to dress that dress, so you can use some uh, form of AI that can help you, okay? Identify and you can see the result before. So as you can see, as I was saying to you on the beginning, AI is everywhere. At the same time that this can facilitate our lives, okay, as we've seen here, using AI to address the questions of climate change. Fantastic, because it's a huge problem, it's a very complex problem, okay? For examples to help us identify disease uh, earlier, so we can act in time. Fantastic, lots of things. But at the same time, this is also have some questions is that we are starting to see a mix between what is analogical, physical, and what is digital. So somehow we are moving from the carbon analogical as we are to the silicon, and this is starting to merge, okay? If you look, for example, how many times you are using digital devices, how many times you are on social networks, how many times our students are there, how many profiles we are creating on these environments. So is every day more difficult to identify where is the border between, between the digital me and the analogical me, okay? So this is something, uh, this is questions that we need to be aware, and this is not passive agents anymore, not passive digital agents. These are cognitive systems, these are smart agents, okay? That put us in terms of the questions, how we can use it, all of them, in the way that will be in the interests of humankind. And if you have such complex challenge, okay? If you have all these questions that are arising right now, this is really amazing because, in my opinion, we are living unique moments nowadays. But at the same time, it's difficult for us to uh, have some perspectives in terms of the future. The, e, the future is blurred. It's difficult for us to, to see what will happen in the next five years, in the next 10 years. Just for you to understand this, when I was uh, a young boy, my father and my mother just told me, okay, Marco, study, take a degree, find a job for life, and you are okay. Nowadays, it's not so easy to say this to our kids and to our students, okay? Because maybe we all, you already heard, we don't know what will be the jobs of the future. If you don't have an idea what will be the jobs of the future, how we will prepare 
our young generation? What skills, what competence, what kind of education? Okay, but even with these difficulties, we need to be in, in, in position that can at the same time try to find what we can do the best in terms of help them. And one very important thing for me is in terms of our mindset. And for us to change our mindset, we need to be aware about what is happening. What are these complex challenge? What are the opportunities? Okay, in the way for us to have the contests, for us to have the environment that can help our students to thrive in the near future and in the midterm. At the same time, as we have AI everywhere, and AI is begun to be side by side with us uh, around. This also start to make us thinking about some questions that, let's say, five years ago, okay, just five years, or may even 10 years ago, you're not thinking about, because they were not questions that were in our perspective. But right now, we all of this, because we are living these moments, right, between agents, machines, okay, that are also with the capability of using intelligence, lots of new questions are being um, put on, uh, on the table. I will just show he, to you some image, okay? And I just want you to reflect and think to yourselves. You can use the chat, okay, here on, on Adobe. If this uh, image is an image of a human, okay, or is just a fake or a false image that was generated by AI. I will show you free, okay? So the first one, what do you think? This is a true person, a person that exists, or there is only something that was generated by AI. I will just give you two, three seconds, okay? So the first one, you can use a shot, okay? I just have some, some people here saying that he's a true person, he's a real man, okay? I will just move to the next one, right? And this one, what do you think? Is true? Is not true? I have some people here. Okay. Okay. I will just move to the next one. All right. You can just think. You don't have to use the, the shot. And, and and this one, the last one, the, this the, the third one. What do you think? Most of the people say true. Diane says not true. Okay. Okay. The three that I am showing here, they are all fake image. Okay. All of them are not true. They are generated for a particular um, technical of AI that is some kind of neural uh, networks. And I think already some 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 of you uh, have written this because some of you know this website. This website is called This Person Does Not Exist. Okay? And you um, can go to, 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 to this website. And each time that you are refreshing, uh, if you press um, uh, F5 on, on, on your keyboard, you will generate a new one. Some of them... Sometimes we can see there is some faults, okay? This, okay, I was doing, if you can see here, there is a, a little bit thing here, okay? That will be normal, not normal on, 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 on here. But the, same, the first time that you look at, at, at them, you think they are true. But no, these, these ones are not, are, are not true. I will just move here. Uh, this is another example about the challenge that we are facing today. This is um, a, J a Japanese tech uh, company called DataGrid, okay? And what they do, they generate fake image of fashion models that they, they can use on the internet for ad advertising and marketing and so on. So what is happening here is that they no longer need human models and they no longer need this uh, to to make this video recording and so on, 
because they have this AI tool that can, can create, as, a, as, as you can see on, on the video, automatically this kind of models, okay? Of course, lots of questions are raised in here. And one of the things, if you are interested to integrate uh, um, the topic of artificial intelligence uh, on a twinning projects, I expect to discuss a lot of, with your students, okay? Because this is really very important. I will just show um, some other examples that also make us uh, think about it. Okay, the video here is not working. Okay, so sorry, um, because I just um, embedded my presentation here on, on, on Adobe. But what is uh, AI is able to do is with just one picture, and, and this in, in this example is the um, Mona Lisa, a painting they can do animations with that okay and if it was working the video you will be able to do it but in, in, in this case is not able but for you just to give idea it's not exactly the same thing if you were seeing the video but nevertheless the the, the next one is also um something that you can uh you can you you you, you can uh, experiment yourself uh also because I will put the, the, the link on, on the chat. This is uh, um, on the website, my heritage, where you can pick up any picture, any photo, okay? You just upload that photo, and what will happen is that photo will come alive, okay? So see how amazing we can do this kind of things. I will try to see if this was working in terms of the video, no, but I will just, Put, just give me one 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 second for you to try it if you if you want once the the video is not um, is not working and I will uh, put on the link and we'll see how amazing okay you can be using this 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 kind of things and and, and in this case uh, particular case is called a nostalgia okay just uh, one more second here so i can show to you okay there it is okay and i will put here on the chat and then you can see by yourself okay so imagine that you have a photo of uh, a relative in your uh, at your house or something like this uh, at black and white, and you can just pick up this and give life to this. Lots of questions that are um, came from this. Okay, this is also in my heritage where you can pick up any photo that you have that is um, black and white, and you can upload the, the, that photo. And automatically, by using AI, what will happen is that they will colorize all the pictures. So imagine what you can do on an AI twinning with these kind of things. Pick up a picture and give a life to this picture. Pick up all photos of your region, for example, and just colorize all these kind of photos. So by using uh, only by using AI, you'll be able to do this. But of course, there is dot, lots of the questions that are um, being um, around all, all of this. As I was telling you before, the question of fake news, what you are reading right now is true, is false, is written by a human, is written by a machine. How can I check it? Okay? We need our students to be more uh, educated in terms of media literacy, right? And other challenge that we have also, as you can see here, in terms of the labor market. For example, you see there, AI at work, staff hire and fire by an algorithm. Okay? It's not a human, a human resource. These things are being decided by these algorithms. And lots of these algorithms that are using machine learning, we call it that inside is a black box. Okay, So inside is a black box. We don't know what is happening there. We don't know what the network, the neural network is doing inside of there. We just give them information, we give them data, and they produce a result. But how they decide? And is the data that I am feeding my algorithm, this data is fair? Did this data doesn't have some kind of stereotypes? Did data don't use biased data or something like this? Okay. And you can see on your right, Facebook is making a bracelet that lets you control computers with your brain. What? 
this is like sci-fi okay but this kind of things with the power of technology and at the same time with the power of ai are happening not in sci-fi but are happening uh, happening uh, today deep voice software can clone anyone's voice with just 3.5 seconds of audio okay so if someone picks up you talking less than four seconds then they can clone and put you say things that we are not expecting to hear you okay so this is other of, of the challenge around here this one is a very nice one at the same time could be a danger one right but you can try it is uh, calling vocodes and you just have to write a, a sentence here a phrase and public uh, personalities will be saying what you are writing here. I have an example here. I will try to see if it, if it works. So just, just give me one minute. Okay, no, not because it's embedded. Nevertheless, what I did, I went to vocodes. I just choose uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, okay? And I read, and I write, sorry. My next twinning project will be about artificial intelligence. It would be an amazing adventure for me and my students. And what I have is... Uh, uh, audio uh, audio file with with Arnold saying what I written in there. Okay, I will just also put here for you if you want to try because I have embedded the example on my PowerPoint and it's not working, but you can easily uh, working with that. Yes, Rosa, for sure, students will love it to do this. Okay, and they have a lot of 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 of, of person there. Some of them are more uh, curated than than than, than others. That is something very interesting that we can do around this. But at the same time, pay attention in terms of the dangers that this, this, this can uh, put us um, uh, for us. Okay, using someone face, someone, okay, voice saying things that he never even thinking about to say. So this is a, a very, very, very critical and very pertinent at, at the same time. Um, Giving all these examples, giving all these kind of things that we are sharing here with you. The question here is, we have artificial intelligence, okay? We have AI systems that some things, some things, and nowadays, uh, don't forget, very narrow. AI, artificial intelligence is very narrow. What is what this means? They are very good at one task, at one thing, but they cannot do other things. Just to give an example, you can have artificial intelligence playing chess like no human can do it. Okay? They are amazing. They learn very fast. But if you ask that artificial intelligence to go to the shelf, and pick up the board of chess and putting on the table, they will not be able to do this kind of things. Okay? So normally today, what is very difficult for humans is very easy for machines. What is very easy for machines is very difficult for humans. Right? So the question, for example, in terms of jobs, in terms of the labor market, is of course, we want to have lots of new jobs. No doubts about it. Our students will need new skills and new competence. Some jobs will disappear because of automation and mainly because of intelligent automation. Right. But what will happen is most of the jobs will be impacted. And what will happen is that some tasks will be uh, done by these AI agents. Another task will be done by humans. And we need, we need to be able to adapt and to be flexible to change our role in the interaction with, with the jobs and with the interaction with these systems, right? So that will be one of the purpose of our students. Creativity, collaboration, curiosity, critical thinking, communication, value judgments, social and emotional learning, okay? This is very important in terms of, of, of our, our, our students. And we all know, because we all are at winners, that we do an amazing job, and you do an amazing job when you involve your students on a training to promote 
these skills and to promote this, this competence. Arriving here, what is the way? Okay, we have a big picture right now. We understand where AI is in terms of what is putting us thinking about and also in terms of, of reflecting. But maybe you are thinking right now, okay, Marco, but AI is not something easy, okay? AI maybe is a complex uh, subject, okay? But as I show you here some examples, you can interact with AI. You can use the power of AI. So why not try to bring to your classroom trying to bring to your training projects the thematic of AI. It's not only have a, a training project about AI, okay? It's bringing the power of AI, the discussion of AI, talk with your students about AI, where AI is impacting. Let's try this, okay? Let's try to use vocodes, for example. What are the questions that I need to discuss with my students around this? Right? Let's colorize this picture. Let's show them all these examples that I was been showing here to you. And, 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 and uh, just a few slides ahead, I will show you some resources, share with you some resources. Okay? So the way is that we should not be afraid in terms of talking about AI. Because AI will be and is nowadays a very important literacy. And our students, they need to be educated in this literacy. They need to know what is AI, they need to do the impact, the challenge, the opportunities, what is happening and so on, okay? So, but how can I do that? How can I bring this to the training? How can I bring this to the classroom and so on? We can do it in very uh, different approach and, and ways. The first thing that we should uh, recognize is, is not impossible. Okay, and I know for right winners there is not such a thing that's impossible. This, this is not a word on your dictionary. Okay, but even if it is impossible, we transform it impossible. And I will just give you some of my ideas and some of my reflections around this, and then I will go to concrete uh, examples. First of all, I would like to share with you uh, is not a framework, okay, in the formal point of view but uh, some of, of my things that I consider in terms of how can we address this question of OVI. And I will divide this in two different topics. One more technical, but see more related with the hardware, if you can say so. And another one will be more in terms of the human side. Okay, let's, for example, saying that will be more in terms of the software. So things in terms of the technical side. Because important for us also to know that we should discuss with our students these kind of things, but we also know that lots of new jobs will be needed in the AI field. So maybe we should starting from today also to teach our students to create with AI, build with AI, develop AI skills. And we are talking about AI data skills are very important, are very critical also. And of course, about entrepreneurship, okay? That is also very important. I can create something with AI, but how can I transform this idea in something that has value? So this more in the technical part. In the other side, they are not separated sides, okay? They are not hermetic. I just put them for be easier for us to understand. We should also bring the question of skills and competence, what I, sh I was uh, showing you before. For our students to know the AI impacts, impacts on society, impacts on economy, impacts on culture, impacts on ecology, okay? And very, very important, if not the most important topic, human and ethic values, okay? We are using this particular uh, type of AI. We are using this AI. Is this AI being fair? Is this AI addressed for the needs of everybody? Okay. Can everybody use it? Right. Is everybody getting the benefits of AI? Is AI for the good of all humankind? 
Okay, and why this is important? It's important because AI will be a tremendous impact in our lives. So we don't want the gap to be bigger and bigger and bigger. We want to narrow the gap and we want to use AI to narrow that gap. So this is just uh, some references here that maybe you can use and pick up some of them in terms of integrating in, in some of, of, of projects. Okay, once we are here, so what could be some ideas, let's say, in terms of projects to be built around a twinning and, and, and an AI? Or can you start to think about some of them? Okay, you are experts on developing developing projects. You are participating in in, in a twinning projects and, and and so on. My first, uh, let's say, advice. Uh, sorry, uh, before I, I I I go there, I just want to show you some resources, right? Before I went in terms in terms of, of the projects, and I think that. We can we can then share the presentation with you and we will have access to all these resources but i'm just sharing some of them here with you elements of ai is a MOOC that is developing from the university of helsinki in partnership with a company called reactor where you can have uh, let's say the first contact uh, with ai the definition what ai is and so on this is uh, available in lots of language, and the main goal is to be available in all the language of the European Union. Machine learning for kids is where you can create some models and so on. So some of the resources that you can be used, if you want to create some AI experience, uh, Pictoblocks is very nice to create, okay? Because it's very easy to create the models. For example, if you want to have an, an AI app that can see or recognize, sorry, they recognize if someone is using a mask or not. What you have to do on Pictoblocks, you just have to give some image with, uh, with using a mask, and then you give some image not using a mask, and you will label, okay? With mask, with mask, with mask, with mask. And the other ones that you don't have a mask, no mask, no mask, no mask, no mask. And that will train a model. And the algorithm will learn, okay? Because they have some machine learning, some algorithm in there. And then it's easy to create an, an app related with that. And then you can start thinking about lots of different things that you can do. So this is just some, some of the resources that I would like to, to share with you. If you want to discuss with your students, for example, uh, the questions related about how AI identifiers and how AI could have some stereotypes you can use this one here. It's called How Normal I Am, right? I cannot see uh, if I can pick up the, this, this link, but I can easily just go here because I have my presentation open here. And this one, I can uh, give you the link and then you can test with your students. Use this with older students, okay? Because this has some questions to reflect and so on for students from high school or something like, like this. I can also put right now on, if you don't know it, on the chat, the elements of AI. Okay, just let me check here. There it goes. And at the same time, Pictoblocks is also a very nice, nice one. Maybe some of you, you already use it, but you can use it. Okay, there it goes. So ah, this one is also nice. You can use it to learn some things about about AI. Okay, so just 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 some of the resources. What I was telling you in terms of ideas for projects, my advice, because I, I forget I have the resources first. My advice is don't try to invent the wheel. Okay, you already have experience on a tuning projects. You already I are being um, doing uh, really amazing projects on ad winning. Just look at these projects or even new projects where you can integrate the topic of AI. Okay? For example, in a project I have about me media literacy, maybe I should integrate the topic of fake news. Okay? So why I don't use 
vocodes with my students. Okay? If you have other kinds of projects, Let's try to integrate. Let's try to find, to find where it fits this topic of AI. Okay? But you can also start in thinking about new projects because, as you see, uh, there is a lot of things that we can discuss around this. And I will, to finish um, my presentation, I will just share with you some questions that can be used in terms of being starting points from some winning projects related with AI. Okay, and then I will just share four uh, projects ideas that maybe could be interesting in using. So just some questions. Okay, if you think about other questions, please just just put in the chat. What do you think when you hear about AI? Uh, can computers have conscience? Would you trust a computer to make important ethical decisions? Try to ask this to your students. Okay, uh, are there jobs AI can do? And other questions that we can uh, put around. How do you, how do people interact with AI? Will AI become more intelligent than humans? What are the issues with facial recognition, for example? Okay. Think about it. This could be nice ideas, nice questions that you can use in terms of developing new at winning projects um, with the thematic of AI. Just to finish. Some, some some examples. One project will be, for example, create an AI expert guessing game. You can do this by using um, some technology, or you you can do this just by using uh, some paper and some and 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 and, 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 and some um, writing stuff, some things like this. Okay, you can just create a, a decision tree, right? But if you want to use to see how this would like, and you can even use this with your students, try to use uh, Akinator. I will put this, because what this AI do is you will start to give in uh, tips and clues, and we, uh, Akinator will try to guess what you are thinking about. Okay? Just once again, I will put Akinator here. And this could be a nice, interesting thing for you to think about. Um, another one is to build, because we have some platforms like machine learning for kids, as I was showing you, and so on, design an AI agent, something that you can interrupt. This could be on the very narrow topic, for example, to give advice about uh, the COVID pandemic, okay, to give some information about uh, some um, rules on your schools or something like this. But if you want your students to try some interaction with these chatbots, you can first ask them, okay, to try this chatbot. It's calling Cookie, okay? If you want to talk a little bit uh, with Cookie, you can do this. To finish, two more ideas, AI and art, okay? We have been talking here about the possibility nowadays of AI AI is able to create paintings. AI is able to create photos. AI is able to create music. So, will be art only for artificial intelligence? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. So, can we use the power of AI for these new kinds of art? Right. And there is a lot of different tools that you can use. I just show you the ones that you can colorize the pictures. There are also another very interesting ones where you put one, two, three pictures and they create a completely different uh, picture. Okay, so just just, just, just discuss with, with this with, with your students. I will just put also this one, it's called Deep Dreamer Generator. Okay, okay, in here, right, that, that, that you can try. And a last, uh, 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 a last idea is about, you know that you, you have this AI, uh, translators. I can translate from Portuguese to English, German to Portuguese, and English to German, and all French, and all this other language, Turkish, and, and, and so on. Okay, but there is a lot of different translators, and some of them, they work better than others. Okay, and some of them, they do a lot of, 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 of mistakes uh, around this. So, why don't you have a net winning project to discuss all these kinds of things? Try these different translators. Then ask your students to identify what was the mistakes. Try to see what are the benefits. Try to see what are 
the disadvantage and so on. Okay, so this could be also an interesting thing. This one, this uh, translator is a, a very nice one. Uh, they have a free version. Okay, is not this is not completely free. Okay, but you can use it and you can try to see the difference between, for example, Google Translator and this DeepL translator. Okay, so this was some of the things that uh, um, um, I was interested in sharing here with you today. And as a conclusion, for you is the most important thing right now is to be aware about all this challenge, about these opportunities, about these new realities, about these new contests, and how is important for us to discuss all this kind of um, questions and topics and all these kind of things with our students, okay? We as educators, we as teachers, we have the obligations to let our students know what is really happening also, okay? Because school is not only about deliver content, but it's also to have our students informed. And what, what could be the best framework or platform for us to be able to discuss all these kind of things? For sure, it will be with that winning. Okay, so this was some of the thoughts that will I will um, was um, interesting in share here uh, with you today, and I will I will just want to leave you with a, um, a last message: is the best way to predict the future is to invent that future. Okay, thank you very much. It was a huge pleasure. Thank you very much, Marco, for the useful session. Uh, um, we saw a lot of interaction in the chat as well. And actually, if you have time, we have a couple of questions for you that yeah. we could address now. Yeah, that's great. So the first question that was posted in the chat uh, was from um, Rosa. Mm -hmm. So, um, artificial intelligence makes a lot of things easier by improving teaching strategies. However, in my opinion, artificial intelligence might recognize a, a face or create a human face, but it cannot perceive a student's difficulty. As an expert, do you believe that in the future, artificial intelligence could really help teachers meet children's needs? Mm -hmm. Okay, that is an amazing uh, question. First, because it's a very um, pertinent uh, question um, uh, nowadays. Artificial intelligence in education has been used for a long time. Okay, so it's not something new. If some even some decades ago, they are trying to create um, platforms and tools that can help students in terms of their learning difficulties or in terms of achieve some, what are the learning outcomes and, and, and so on. One of the big examples around this is what we call the intelligent future systems, okay? Mainly the, the, the student is interacting with, with, with the content and what is defined as the, the learning outcomes by a, a teacher that he is able, okay, commas here, to detect what are the students' learning difficulties or even some dis disabilities in terms of, 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 of the students and try to give them a path where it can easily uh, address this kind of, 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 of problems, right? Even today, uh, we have uh, lots of, of companies and institutions and, and organizations that develop these this, this tools and platforms some of them with more success than, 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 than the others. The question here, the, the main question for me here is, okay, we can have these this, this tools and these platforms that are AI-based, okay? The question here is what we want, what is the purpose in terms of, of education? What we want our students to learn, right? Because if you are creating in terms of these systems, 
that in somehow you just isolate the student, you put some headsets in the students, you put on the front of the computer and you pass the responsibility to an, an algorithm. I think that is not the more desirable learning environment that we want, okay? But if you are only focused on the contents and learning a partic particular subject, AI could be very good at it. In the other side, if you have these platforms, but these platforms are platforms that will be enhanced with collaboration, will be enhanced with students that have difficulties interact with other students that can help them. That could be easier for teachers to identify what are some of these difficulties and can act as soon as possible for the student to learn. Okay, I think AI will be great on this on this particular contest, right? But what we should not be, let's say, blind is thinking that we could have a system and we give to the system all the responsibility because we know learning is most of all a social interaction and we need this social interaction. As I was saying, the human values, okay? The human relations are very important. More than ever nowadays when we are starting to have this some, some some people call smart machines, cognitive machines, intelligent machines, or agents, okay? Thank I, you I very much. If, if... And yes, one more question. Um, how can a teacher explain artificial intelligence to the students, including the e-safety? Okay. When you're talking about e-safety, we're talking about in terms of online safety and, and the using of on, on, online um, uh, environments. I think the question is related um, uh, with that. More than ever, nowadays, we have to educate our students in terms of e-safety, okay? Because it's not just the question of interact with contents and, and, and so on, is for us to be able and to educate them, not only on AI literacy, is very important, of course, and also in media literacy, and what they are doing in terms of these this digital all environments, okay? Because these environments are getting more and more complex. They are getting, um, let's say, more and more difficult for us to surf them, okay, to navigate on them. And we need our students to be aware about all these things. We need our students to be educated. We, our students need to how they interact. I put on one of, of, of my slides, one of the questions that could be very interesting for an, an AI project is, how do I interact with these systems? And we do, when we are talking about artificial intelligence, we are, talking about, we are talking about digital. We are talking about digital, we are talking about online environments. And if we are talking about online environments, we are talking about e safety. Okay, so everything is, 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 is connected. And important, AI literacy, media literacy, in terms of the way that we um, discuss this with our students. Great, thank you very much. There are a lot, a lot of positive comments in the chat. And as I said before, there was a lot of interaction. So I think the participants found it really, really interesting and useful. So thank you very much, Marco, for being with us today. And thank you to all the participants. Just one more information for you please uh, do not forget to save this link before we close the webinar and complete uh, the feedback form my colleague Eleonora just posted the link also in the chat so you have it there and thank you very much again um i hope to see you soon and uh, i wish you all a, a good evening <laughs>